What's up guys, welcome back to the GC journey. This is now episode two in the GC8 engine bay harness series. Last episode, we listed all the components in the engine bay that we are going to be wiring. We did the harness layout and branching and copied it onto paper. So we're gonna kick this episode off with cutting all the wires to length and populating the engine bay side of the bulkhead connector. So we'll start with that and move on from there. When it comes to wire preparation, there are two things you will need to take into account. The first thing is making sure when calculating the wire lengths is that the wire is long enough to reach its component after being twisted in the harness. That is why we add 20% extra length to each measurement we take. But also not to cut the wire too long so you don't waste material since the TXL wires ain't cheap. The second thing to take notice of is the strip length. On one hand, you want to expose enough conduct so that you get a solid crimp. On the other hand, you do not want to expose too much conductor, otherwise when trying to populate the bulkhead connector, the wire could start bending, and that's not a good day for anyone when that happens. We will be doing all the splices for the power grounds, sensor supplies, etc. at the connector instead of at different points down the harness. This will add more wire length to the harness and the main trunk will be slightly bulkier, but less crimps overall, which means less potential points of failure along the harness. Once all the wires have been prepared and the splices have been done, it's time to populate the bulkhead connector. Now when doing this, you'll want to take your time and make sure that each pin goes into its dedicated slot. There are two things you can do to help prevent messing this up. Number one, always work with the documentation you prepared to double check that the slot number matches the wire color you're about to pin. The second thing could be to measure the wire you're about to pin to confirm it suits the wire length of the component listed in the connector slot. Okay, so we are done populating the bulkhead connector. Wasn't too bad of a job. Kind of hard to believe that this is an entire engine bay harness. I mean, looking at it now, it's not that intimidating. Like I mentioned, all the splices were done at the connector. There are not gonna be any splices along the way. So what we are going to be doing from here is mounting the connector into a vise. We will also be doing service loops of the connector and I'll start concentrically twisting the main trunk of the harness. We'll then put some sheathing on it. We'll put a connector boot and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I've completed the first section, which is the main trunk of the harness. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so I'm a little rusty. Now, before we start branching the harness out, we're gonna do the sheathing and boot the connector. Now, when it comes to booting connectors, there are a number of ways you can approach this. And to understand what options are available and what the difference between them is, it is over to our connector booting correspondent who's reporting from all the way over right here next to me. So Yotam, please tell our viewers what are the options available when it comes to booting connectors? So you can use heat shrink with the shrink ratio of one to four, which is more the affordable option. Mm -hmm. And you can use the dedicated heat shrink boot that has a, a specific properties for booting connectors. Mm -hmm. All right. And if the heat shrink is more affordable, why would one still prefer to use a dedicated heat shrink boot? So first of all, heat shrink boot uh, shrinks more aesthetically. But the main, main issue is the insulation. When you use a heat shrink with a shrink ratio of 1 to 4, you have a thinner insulation around the connector area and a thicker insulation around the main trunk of the harness. With a dedicated heat shrink, you, you will have a, a lip around the edge of the connector that holds uh, the connector more firmly, mm -hmm. where you have uh, more room to fill up uh, potting glue around the service loops where you want the strain relief to be better. Okay. And you have uh, a better hold of the trunk of the harness. So basically we get even protection all around. Yes, and the boot will hold the connector better since it has a distinguished lip for that purpose. Okay, sounds good. 
So this is the connector boot we will be using. Your thumb will now shrink it onto the connector and then we will show you the final result. Okay, so the connector has been booted, the main trunk has been sheathed. Next job on the list is to start branching the harness out and then twisting and sheathing each section separately. Let me know in the comments if your car sounds like a Subaru, looks like a Subaru and drives like a Subaru, what you need to do with it. But in any case, that is all for this episode. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, see you in the next one.